in the great show. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of It's a Dharma. Today I have amazing director, artist, architect, and a lot of other stuff that he does, Sava Živković. He's my friend also, and I think I did a good introduction now, but I will elongate it a little bit more. So he's an amazing artist that made a boom in industry since 2015-16. It started with shorts, it started with uh, many stuff, and I'm finally bringing him on stream so he can talk about his career. Hi, Savo. Hey. <laughs> you like the introduction? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, although um, half of it is incorrect. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, I apologize. I, I, no, 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 that's fine. I, I, yeah, I'm just not an architect. Uh, I was doing a lot of archivists, but never actual architecture, uh, although I am an architecture geek <laughs> in a way. Uh, but yeah, thanks, thanks for thanks for having me, man. This is um, we. It's it's weird, like being in the same city uh, and living you know, like literally 15 minutes away with a car, and we never see each other, except on <laughs> like stuff like this. Do you so. have something to tell me? You don't like me. You don't like me. <laughs> no, no. I was I was merely thinking that we work too much. So yeah. Absolutely, I think that's the problem. Uh, speaking about it, I will just go briefly so that we don't bother people, but in Belgrade, somehow it all set up that we are living like 5-10 minutes away from each other. You know that in yeah. center there is Milan, Studio, Shliva and others, and I'm there, and we literally see each other every 3 or 4 weeks or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> well, serves me right for being so isolated from you guys. By the way, Bjorn says there's no audio. Uh, I don't know if, if There that's... is audio. They always say that in the beginning because I turn it on and I turn on audio ah. later. So there is audio now. <laughs> All right. What's up, Bjorn? What's up, Bjorn, my buddy? Thank you for the drawing. So, Savo, let's start talking about your amazing work and your career a little bit. I want to know, I want to know, where did it all start from? How did Sava <laughs> start? Oh, uh, dude. Um, well, Bjorn? Do you want to hear the, like the long, the long ass story? <laughs> or do you want the, the short, the bridged version? Uh, I guess like the the if we want to go way back, um, I was always into art. I was always into drawing and shit. I, I'm I'm terrible at drawing now, but when I was a kid, I was uh, always kind of doing that. Uh, my dad is a carpenter, but he kind of collects art all throughout his life, and so we grew up with a bunch of paintings, a bunch of sculptures, and stuff like that mm -hmm. all around us. So that's why it was kind of always um, interesting to me. I guess it's just something I grew up with. Um, and then literally, uh, when I, when I started college, uh, I actually wanted to be a tennis coach, but then my dad actually forced me into studying art, which is like completely the opposite way around of what actually happens. Um, usually people would be like wanting to start study art and then par parents would kind of push them away from that. Yeah. Uh, but because my dad is kind of friends with, um, a bunch of artists here, um, they all kind of like literally forced me. I didn't want to do it, but then. Uh, then I started and I just fell in love immediately. Um, and then even that, like when I started studying uh, interior uh, design, um, I kind of like started working a bit in 3D and immediately I fell in love with 3D, like even more than the actual design and art side of things. Uh, so I kind of quickly, as soon as I finished studies, uh, I immediately started working uh, essentially like a 3D freelancer. And over the years of studying, I've actually kind of, uh, I've done a bunch of freelance work where I've kind of done a bit of everything because like when you're a freelancer, um, you're kind of, uh, especially 3D freelancer, uh, you kind of need to know a bit of everything to kind of uh, get the higher chances of getting a job. So I did a bit of ArcVis, I did a bit of motion design. I essentially did a bit of everything. I never was any good at any of those particular areas, but I knew, a bit of everything. I was like that typical kind of, um, what's the expression? Jack uh, of all trades. Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. Son of all <laughs> trade, master of, of all. Ma yeah, no, master That's of none. That's how I see it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I will say the, the one thing that I'm that I'm decent at is hiding the mistakes. So that's uh, that's kind of kind of how I kind of. <laughs> went through life. Sal's um, career guy is based on hiding things. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but essentially, like that's that's how it happened. Like I I did a bunch of different projects where I did a bunch of different things, and then 
uh, when the timing was right, uh, at one point um, we were kind of sharing this kind of co-working space uh, with Milan and with Iz. Um, people know Iz, he's the guy who does uh, the music uh, for all of our animations. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the three of us were kind of sharing uh, uh, kind of a collaborative co-working space at one point and we decided to kind of try and do something together and try to do something different that like the usual stuff that we're doing um, and we like the three of us made that first like Twitch loadout uh, animation that got us the opportunity to work on IFCC titles and then those IFCC titles kind of got us to where we are now. Um, I'm personally working with Axis Animation for the past two years as a director. Um, uh, is uh, is working with me on specific projects. Uh, we've done two thus far where he scored those two projects. Um, still waiting on a chance to work with Milan uh, on mm -hmm. something. Uh, it's just uh, like the per apart from our personal work, uh, I'm still waiting for that perfect project to work together on him for for like an actual client project. Yeah. Um, but essentially, that's how it kind of happened. Like it's, uh, it's, it was this perfect storm of a lot of years of working in 3D in different fields and kind of getting to a point where all of those different fields I could kind of uh, merge together and create something cohesive out of it, which was IFCC titles. Um, I see. So that's the that's the very very long and convoluted answer to how it all started. It is long, but we understood yeah. it all. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to know is, uh, so when we are speaking, we will come to the uh, the IFCC and the loadout and all of other other shorts that you did. But what I want to know is, uh, you said that you immediately went to 3D. And yeah. I also did that. And everybody was judging me because I'm doing 2D and not uh, 3D and not 2D. Did that mm -hmm. happen for you also or people were supporting um, no. you? No, no, no. Uh, well, it's it's a completely different different thing. I think when uh, it, in a time when you started, uh, you were specifically focusing on design, and yeah. uh, that that was a kind of a taboo subject at the time. Like you're not a designer unless you're designing specifically in two D or like drawing, which was like complete bullshit to me. Design is design, regardless yeah. of the tool you use. Uh, but to me, that never. I, I was never on that kind of side of things because I specifically started doing 3d as a 3d artist not as a designer uh, so that's why like it doesn't, didn't really happen for me um, I was kind of on the outside of that whole kind of concept art design community my, my initial kind of community that I was a part of was more into like mostly actually archvis archvis mm. architectural visualization community and then but I was always inspired by by concept art and uh, and design and that's that's actually like Probably like one of my first kind of uh, a first first thing that I wanted to really go for when I started studying. I was just blown away by concept art that people were doing back in the day, and I thought I was gonna do the same. And then I bought a Wacom tablet mm. and I tried using it, and I was like, I suck at this. I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna do this. And then I figured out, well, this 3D seems a bit easier, so I, I guess I'll do that. Um, interesting. So yeah, interesting because yeah. many people are like. I suck at this, but I will try no 3D for me. So it's interesting that you were like, this is easier for me. Because also for me, 3D was easier. I'm honestly telling you. Yeah, I mean, it, whatever whatever works works for your needs. Like, uh, that's doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, to, to me, it was always, like, even from the very start um, from using 3D, like, uh, I was kind of, like, fascinated by every single aspect of it. But... Uh, from the very get-go, there was something about moving images that was always kind of appealing to me the most. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say like I was ever like all of my initial test projects that I've done. Uh, all, they, were, they were all animations. Like there, I just I just never got anything out of stills. Uh, it was always it always had to be moving images for me. So that was kind of I don't know. It's just maybe again just one of the many factors of growing up like watching a lot of films and a lot of cartoons and stuff like that 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 kind of embedded itself in my brain and i just i guess needed to replicate that in some way i see what yeah. what, what i like about you is uh, we met around 2016 i think and uh, 2017 at 17. ifcc oh yeah. my god you remember <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we met before that, I think. We met before. Uh, no, 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 no. We actually met right outside of uh, Kino Europa. At yeah, yeah, I sent you messages <laughs> Literally, literally outside. I sent yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we, 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 talk, we spoke like via Messenger or whatnot on yeah. Facebook. 
It was the we best never day met. of my life when I met you in front of Kino <laughs> Europa. I was like, man, guys, this is the, the life. <laughs> but yeah, um, I sent you messages. I was asking you, what do you do? Because I wasn't sure what you were doing. And that's what I like really about your career. You are not a concept artist, but you nope. are here and you are making such an impact on the industry of the concept art. Everybody is talking about you. That's what I like. So what I want to know is, how did you decide I'm going to do this now? And I'm saying this because we still can't say what you are specifically. You are a director, but you're also a 3D generalist, but you are a... Uh, you well, are, well you are yeah, but, but I, I would say, I would say, well, I, I'm finally getting comfortable with saying that, but I would say I'm a primarily a director now. Like I never, uh, ever since IFCC, I have not taken a single job where my role was like a CG artist. Uh, I've been solely working as a director ever since IFCC. Uh, and that's what I that's what I'm what I'm kind of building towards. And that's what I that's essentially what I plan on doing the rest of my life. Um, and I, it's it, it's weird for me because I, I was never um, I, I never really wanted. Well, not to say I didn't want it. Like everybody has this like, oh, like because it sounds cool, like to say, oh, I'm a director. Yeah. Uh, but I never really like thought it was going to happen like at all. Uh, it was just this kind of a like wild dream. Uh, and while we were working for like uh, those, on those IFCC titles and all the like previous personal projects and stuff like that, uh, those weren't ever done as like being like like we set a goal like we're gonna do those in hopes of getting a director's job or whatever like that that was never a plan like we literally just did it for fun uh, and then this all happened like out of nowhere literally out of nowhere like I. I literally had, and it wasn't just like from Access side. It was literally at one point, um, three or four different uh, major studios um, kind of reached out for the for the same position. And I was just like flabbergasted, if that's a word, <laughs> uh, because I was I was never considering myself uh, uh, kind of a, a director, I guess. Uh, and it took me a long, long time to, to be actually comfortable in saying that, um, because there's this there's this thing today. Like everybody will, everybody will kind of like make a five second iPhone video and they'll credit themselves as being a director or everybody yeah. will, or even, even like more than more complex pieces of work than that. Like there's been amazing animations or short films that have been done like by one person and they would credit themselves as being a director, which is completely valid, like absolutely valid. Uh, but in my, in my perspective, in my mind, like you're not truly and you haven't truly directed anything until you've directed a team of people because that's essentially where all your director skills are coming uh, in hand it's communicating your vision to a team of people that needs to deliver that needs to kind of produce that yeah uh, and that's your main job like you're, you'll never you'll never do any actual like apart from our personal projects obviously I'm working uh, on the technical side as well like with access, there's teams of 50 to 60 people per trailer and uh, you'll never touch, like no matter how awesome of an artist you are, you'll never touch like any specific part of the production because that's not your job. Your yeah. job is just to kind of delegate the work. Um, so yeah, that's um, another yeah. long ass answer. <laughs> no, no, no worries. We have all time of the world and I like how you elaborated this because yeah, some something strange is happening in the world it's not mm -hmm. any more strange because it's normal but since social media instagram and everything you see that people like titles and they put that i'm a designer i'm a director i am uh, i'm this i'm that and a lot of times you ask yourself how how is this guy a director you know and uh, it, it's, it's yeah strange. it's strange yeah it, do it doesn't really like i wouldn't say that that stuff matters because i mean in all honesty who cares um yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I, I guess in the past I was more observant of that, and I used to pay more attention to that than now. Like nowadays, yeah. I'm just I'm just simply focused on on working, and that's that's kind of it. Absolutely. Uh, doesn't sound too exciting though. <laughs> it sounds very exciting because every time Sawa posts something, the internet explodes. And yeah, well, well, thanks, man. I yeah, that's that's nice to hear. I'm always blown away, man, when I see it. Like every time I see something, I remember on FCC. Uh, seeing the the short and I was like what the hell is this <laughs> and everybody was saying who was in the team there with you there was Christina there was uh, Milan there was uh, who was else there uh, Mihailo Mihailo Nenad Nenad uh, yeah they were all like 
I, I, I remember approaching you and I was I knew Milan then and I was like, guys, this is insane. And they were like, Sava did it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't do it all. Uh, I, I, I did do a, a vast majority of it, but I, I did not do it all. Um, like Nenad modeled the spaceship, Mikhailo modeled the character, like all of those are crucial components that, that make it a whole. Like, yeah. Uh, and I, I never want to make everything by myself. Like that's that's not it, like especially nowadays. Like my my goal is to kind of distance myself from the actual uh, production process as much as possible. But with personal work, you just you just can't. Um, you just have to kind of dive in. Yeah, it is hard balancing yeah. life and and uh, and your work, especially as a freelancer or as yeah. a. It's really hard. So what I want yeah. to talk about is. How do you manage that kind of time? Because a lot of artists, directors, writers, everybody who is doing creative stuff has a lot of problems with that. So, what? Oh, well, I'm 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 probably the worst person to ask that question. I'm 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 literally like the worst time manager or whatever in the world. Like I, I just I, I don't use any like spreadsheets or anything like that. I I don't use any kind of planning of my day or anything like that. I literally just sit down, I work until the problem of the day is solved, and then I go to sleep. And then tomorrow, there I, there's a new problem presenting itself, you need to solve it by the end of the day, and that's essentially my, my time. Um, when it comes to kind of like personal versus uh, client work, um, it's it, it's kind of different now because it's, I, I, I am, and that's a question that kind of Keeps on popping, so I guess uh, this would be a good time to answer that. But uh, like a lot, um, a lot of people would ask me, like, how do I manage uh, to kind of juggle between client and personal work? Uh, and there's a very kind of I, I do have a big advantage in that. Um, for one, I've been doing this for a while, so I, I'm I'm fairly efficient at doing 3D. How long uh, have you been doing it? Uh, at this moment, it's been 11 years. Good. Uh, since 2008. Um, but uh, apart from that, uh, the, the big advantage I have is currently um, I work with Access as an off-site remote director. So that means uh, most of the time I work remotely from home uh, and it's mostly just calls, Skype sessions, stuff like that, and reviews. Uh, and then for key moments in production, I would go on-site uh, in Scotland office. Uh, and. Um, I would probably be there for maybe like a week or two at the most, and then I'll go back. So during the like during the production of, of a project, which is like let's say four months, I would maybe spend three weeks in Glasgow, and then the rest of the time I'll be home. And while I'm at home, it's not full on. Like the first couple of months, the first let's say half of the project is full on time because that's the most crucial part of the project. But the rest of the project is not really full time. It's more kind of part time job. And in the meantime, like I can do other things. Um, and then apart from that, um, the big advantage that I have is uh, uh, obviously going to be living in Serbia and working for a UK salary. Mm. Uh, so that that makes it a lot easier for me to kind of take breaks. And I can I can afford to take breaks and say, all right, I'm not going to work on any client projects for the next three or four months. And in that time, I'm just going to focus on my own stuff. So I can completely dedicate myself to my own stuff and kind of like completely immerse myself in that. Um, so that's that's obviously like the, the big advantage that I have. Uh, like people usually complain about living in Serbia, but to me, it's the fucking best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, that's, that's I mean, kind of there are advantages. Absolutely. When you're working with foreigners, there are some disadvantages. We can go yeah. for you know when the two Serbians meet, we will discuss Serbia mostly and what's wrong <laughs> in it. But let's let's jump away from that subject because we'll be talking only about that. But what I want to know is, you you said you don't have time management, but it's all working out for you. So you must be doing some good steps unconsciously. But what I want to know is, there any way how you relax because there is that moment in the project when you are like, oh my god, I can't look at this project anymore. I can't <laughs> look at it. Anymore. I'm gonna kill myself. So I, I don't know, man. I'm getting, do. I'm getting, I'm getting worse at that as well. Like I, I used to be pretty chill about the, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I used to, like, every day was just fucking awesome. I was doing what I loved doing, and I was just enjoying myself and working with friends and stuff. But it seems like in the past two years, uh, things have become become a bit more tense. Yes. Um, and I think that that comes with with a slight perception of 
like I'm still whenever I do anything I, I do it primarily like because I love doing it I primarily do it for that reason but um, like when you're when you're just starting out um, and you're just doing it for the love of it there's no expectations but now all of a sudden like we have a couple of projects behind us that that have had like um, like some amount of success and uh, there's a pressure that's kind of building up oh will the next thing I do kind of live up to that uh, or will it be better or will it be worse will people like it will people hate it um, it's not like the main thing that's bothering me but it is there like there is a slight dose of that that's kind of maybe making like some sort of pressure now yeah. uh, but I can definitely say that there is like these days um, it's kind of uh, there is a bit more kind of uh, pressure than before um, and what I do, I, I have no idea, man. Like I'm not. Uh, I just, I just chill. I guess I just watch films or get drunk with friends or or whatever. Um, uh, I yeah, I don't know. Um, there's been a couple of times where there's only been a, a couple of times where I was really, really freaking stressed out about personal work. Um, ne it never really happened, uh, kind of that much. Yeah. And it doesn't. It doesn't help. It doesn't help that I'm not like working out anymore. I used to work out a lot and now I'm just like lazy as hell. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe that will help. Maybe that would I, I, I would suggest people doing that. Yeah, work out. I like how you're suggesting and you're not doing it. Do it, people. Yeah. Work I out. Mean, I, I mean, it, it worked out for me in the past, so I know it works. I'm, just, I'm not doing it now. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love this. But what, what do I want to know? <laughs> oh, look at that. Antonio. Antonio is in the chat. Hey, Antonio. Yeah, Bjorn, a Spanish brother. Antonio Bjorn are doing a lot yeah. of commenting. They love you. And yeah. w what I want to know is, uh, yeah, your projects are very interesting because they are not concept art, but actually they are concept art. And mm -hmm. I, I know I, I'm I'm telling you, I will repeat this one more well, time. They're, well, they're 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 kind of I mean they're they're short films foremost first and foremost yeah. but they 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 are based a lot like a lot of the ideas are based on on concept art yeah, and the, the concept art is is a tool that we use uh, in kind of delivering um, yeah. those shorts so yeah and it looks amazing it looks insane such a high quality of work for me out of this world when i saw it on ICC. i'm showing at the moment the making of ICC's titles and uh, if you guys don't know who, what is IFCC and you're watching, it's a festival in Croatia. It used to be in Zagreb, now it's in Split. Check it out on the, on the internet. That was a little commercial for Marco. But yeah, uh, I mean, the project is so diverse. And what I want to know is, uh, how did you know that you're ready to do this kind of project? Because was there any feeling or you were just, let me just jump in, the, in, the, in this and try to figure it out? Because there's so it's much a... stuff. It's a bit of it's a bit of both uh, because it, like to rewind to rewind back a little bit um, like we used to do a bunch of well I personally like used to do a bunch of archvis and motion design and stuff like that so I did a couple of shorts that were focusing on archvis and and motion design and then when we wanted to do something different uh, in in that shared space that I uh, spoke about earlier uh, when we made Twitch loadout which was that really short animation that was like the main goal for that was. I always like I was always a big gamer and uh, I was always blown away by specifically like game cinematics and I always wanted to do something like that. Uh, so we wanted to do like the simplest version of that, have Milan design a character and uh, like do a little animation with that character, like something abstract, something not really story driven, just to kind of complete a little sequence and see if we can do that as a small theme. Um, so when we did that, when we when we did that Twitch animation, um, that was kind of like that was the breaking point because when we did that and like in my case I was doing animations for I don't even know how many years at that point but I was doing animations that were just like plain spaces or little motion design that, that were devoid of any character and now all of a sudden we had a character and a badass looking one as well and we had a character moving and uh, and that that just immediately like completely shifted my mind into like going go, going down this rabbit hole of like holy shit that i'll never be able to do anything without a character anymore uh because it was just just simply having a person uh that you can kind of frame your kind of little sequence around uh to me was kind of like mind-blowing and amazing um so when we did that when we did twitch um we were we were just as soon as we finished it we were just kind of 
like bursting with ideas. The three of us, Milan uh, is and myself, we're just kind of bursting with ideas. And we were literally because we figured out, all right, we can do characters now. What are we going to do next? Like, let's what's the next step to this? How can we take this skill set that we have now and kind of how can we apply it to something that's a bit more longer format, a bit more complex uh, in storytelling um, uh, aspect of it? Um, and that was literally kind of how it happened. Like we we were talking about the ideas, and immediately we thought of the idea. Let's let's use IFCC and kind of like let's frame uh, the whole kind of concept around IFCC. And uh, we wanted to because Milan was giving lectures two year two prior years at IFCC, so he knew Marco and Sven. So we were like we we wanted Milan to contact Marco and kind of in, give us an introduction and then we would give them the idea of or pitch them the idea of us kind of creating the titles. But what happened was Marco actually contacted us before that um, because he saw Twitch and he wanted us to come and do the lecture. Um, so when he contacted us, we said like, yeah, that's great, but uh, we perfect have storm. we have yeah yeah it's literally like the perfect storm of things. Um, we were like, yeah, that's great. We, we, we'd love to do that, but um, we also have this idea of actually doing the titles. And uh, he said, yeah, just go for it. Uh, and he didn't see anything. It took us like six months to finish those titles. Uh, and he literally saw it when it went online. He didn't see anything prior to that. So that was one little magical moment uh, so for him, So his brain exploded. His brain exploded literally. He was like, oh my God, my best move ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that was that, 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 that's kind of, how, kind of how it happened. Like a lot of it, a lot of it we, we figured out along the way. A lot of it, like all of the, all of the things that we pretty much know we, we learned on that project. It was, it was such an incredible learning experience. Uh, but we did go into it kind of knowing what we want to do and we did like go in excited and kind of like like I said like we after Twitch we were just kind of bursting with ideas and ready for for kind of a for the next thing um, so yeah that's how it happened and it kind of never stopped ever since um, so yeah yeah it's 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 evolving really good for you guys it's evolving really really good uh, I'm showing now the stuff from Axis you did and I would like to talk a little bit about that because... Uh, oh, well, show Outriders. That's the old one. That's yeah. the... Yeah, that's Destiny stuff. We are coming to the new one. We are coming Or to actually, the there's... Oh, yeah, there's the lag. So I guess, like, you were showing this, like, a minute ago or something. No, no, no. This is now. This is now. But uh, 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 we right. have a good internet. So we are in Serbia, but we, we have good internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> I have the shittiest one. Oh, my God. What I wanted to ask you is, uh, I mean, uh, you said that you were inspired by cinematics and I was also inspired by cinematics of the game. They were insane quality back then. Well, you look at them now, you're like, this was good, you know, because one of the cinematic that inspired me was World of Warcraft. And oh, actually nice. not World of Warcraft, Warcraft Frozen Throne. Uh, it uh -huh. was the troll when, uh, when they're going uh, to fight. And when he gets killed, that left such a profound impact on me. I want to know what kind of cinematics did Sava like, because I want to know and connect the dots. What inspired you to become like this? Well, I would say like a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff from Blur was kind of was kind of my initial inspiration. Um, I want to like I, I can't even say like off the top of my head, but like pretty much anything that was ever done by Blur was always kind of blowing my mind. Like I, I literally I knew work from Blur before I ever started doing 3D because I was just kind of blown away by those cinematics and watching them when I was kind of just a kid and playing video games even before like before university. Um, and then, like, I figured out, oh, well, there's uh, there's all these other companies. I, at, first, at first, I thought like everything was done by Blur, but then <laughs> I figured out, well, there's there's all these other companies uh, that do all this awesome stuff, and um, it's literally like, I don't know, like all of them. Uh, I just I just kind of loved. Uh, it, it was just something about, and I guess you can you can see that in my work that I'm I'm always striving like for realism and. Uh, that was like, especially in the early days of, of CG, uh, seeing something done to that level was just incredibly fascinating to me. And uh, it was always kind of a goal ever since then is just trying to get things to look as realistic as possible. Uh, but then again, like um, in, in now there's such a kind of plethora of different styles um, that's kind of 
even more interesting to see. Um, so I, I guess like, and this like this is not like just because I'm with Axis now, but one of my favorite cinematics uh, ever is the Dawn of, Dawn of War three uh, cinematics that was produced by Axis. That was way before my time there, but uh, that that has such kind of a mystery behind it, and the, the look of it is is just absolutely fantastic. It's kind of got this slightly painterly quality. Uh, but it's still realistic in a way that I just, I just love, absolutely love the look of that and the feeling of it and the music, everything kind of gels perfectly. Um, uh, apart from that, like, I mean, you can, uh, I guess you watch the, the Love, Death and Robots and you can see like how, how kind of animations have, animation has gone like different ways and different styles. Uh, and you can have like something like The Witness, which is like completely blowing things, people's minds still, uh, like people still have no idea how, how it was made. Um, and it's it just looks insane. It looks like nothing you've ever seen before. It's kind of stylized, but it's it's realistic at the same time. Like it's it's just weird. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, again, very long and convoluted answer. No worries, no worries. It explains perfectly what I ask. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what I would like to touch now. I'm watching the making of videos and stuff like that. Uh, what is your specific? I would like to hear because I know that people. Most, most of the people don't understand what the director does. I mean, it sounds like a title, he's doing a lot of stuff, but nobody knows how the day goes. I mean, if they ask me what, what does a hard surface designer do, I would tell them they kick me in the back of the room and I have to design. But what, <laughs> but, but what I want to know is, how does your day go in Axis? What do you need to do? What are your daily routines and so on? How does that go? If it's possible to talk about it. Yeah, no, no, it's possible. So, I mean, essentially, a like director's job is essentially to carry the vision for the project and to come up with a creative treatment then that needs to get communicated to the team uh, in order to produce that creative treatment. Uh, you're essentially like, you're either writing a script or are given a script and then you need to translate that script to the screen, to the final product. Um, that sounds super simple when I say it like that, but it's anything but. Um, typically like early, early days of production, you would get a brief uh, you have to come up with a creative treatment to that brief where you're describing in whatever ways you can your idea uh, in what the trailer or a short film or whatever it is or a commercial is going to look like. Um, you can describe it with words, with mood boards, with um, previs if you're doing 3D, with storyboard animatics if you know how to draw. Uh, but the main thing is you need to be able to communicate your idea. Like you need to be able to communicate your idea idea to the client first, so they can buy into it uh, and they they can get on board with uh, what you want to create. And it has to be clear for them that they know what you're doing. And then you have to be able to communicate it, communicate it clearly to the rest of the team who are going to be producing it. Um, so uh, first maybe week or so is uh, working on a previous animatic. Uh, so you're either doing that in 3D or in 2D with storyboards. Um, if it's 2D storyboards, I'll be assigned with a, a storyboard artist and I would sit down with the artist and I would talk with him about uh, what this shot needs to represent or what needs to happen in the shot. He would like sketch it out and then together we would kind of assemble like a rough boardomatic. Uh, which will then be taken by the editor and the editor will edit that and then i will be giving notes to the editor and that will last for the first couple of weeks uh until we've completely nailed the kind of uh, the pace uh the cutting like everything pretty much about about the, the whole trailer and then after that is set in stone after that is done after we know like all right this is the actual length of what we're doing this is how many shots we have this is what's happening in all these shots then we can actually start producing it. And when we actually start producing it, like what I've, what I've mentioned thus far, that's the, that's the most kind of important in my mind and uh, um, like directing process is just that very kind of initial um, setting down the idea and coming up with the idea. And essentially like um, um, when, you, when you have the, like the locked edit done after that, it's all just production and it's all just teams going in and starting to model everything, uh, rig, animate and whatever. And uh, at that time, the, your job kind of is more, um, um, it kind of takes a step back a little bit uh, because that, that stuff takes time, like modeling all those crazy environments or characters, it takes a lot of time. Um, so you're kind of like having reviews every second or third day where there's been some progress made. 
uh, and then you can have reviews. You can see where the artists have like uh, to which point they they came, and then you can give feedback to whatever that needs to be. Does does it fit with the story? Does this need to be slightly different or whatnot? Um, and that's essentially like towards the rest of the project, your your responsibilities are mainly going to be just reviews and making sure that team is hitting that initial vision that you had. Um, does that make any sense? Absolutely. <laughs> I like how you're always speaking for five minutes and then you ask, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here like closed off in these four walls of mine. I'm, I, yeah. Sometimes I'm just, sometimes I'm just rambling, so please stop me if you if you yeah. Next stream we are doing live. I said to Milan, we're gonna do this. We are we are literally living five ten minutes from each other. Next time we are gonna meet up, put two microphones and talk like real people, so we don't uh, share the screens. So that's that's yeah yeah that's the next thing. Get some drinks as well. Absolutely, absolute <laughs> whiskey for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that has to be done. <laughs> but <laughs> let's 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 get back to guys. By the way, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them. Don't be shy because this is a chance to ask Sava live, and we'll be finishing in 30 minutes. So we have a lot of time for you to pose the questions that I can read them and ask Sava. And what do you wanna? I see I see a question from Bjorn. Do you wanna? Asked questions at the end. Or I don't like you... Bjorn, man. I wanted to leave him for the last question. I'm joking. Let's do it. He painted me today. I mean, because... no, I, I, I don't have a long answer because I, I, I've, I have no idea who. I'm not Let's familiar with his movies. First. Yeah, yeah. Are you familiar with Monty Ohm movies? You saw? Well, you are not familiar, so. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Sorry, Bjorn. So that's a very short answer. I'm not also familiar, so I will check and post it on the chat so we know what they are. But what I want to know is, uh, when you're doing your personal projects, and I'm looking the fright, what is the thing that you like the most to do, and what is the thing that you do it just because it has to be done? Uh, so again, brace yourself for a long answer, but um, this goes like hand in hand with one of the previous questions that you had, um, which had to do with me starting out. Uh, like at, at one point. At one point, while I was doing a lot of like CG production and like stuff like that, uh, I realized I, I, the, the aspect of the of any project that I was doing, the aspect that I enjoyed the most was the very early on kind of creative aspect where you're kind of kind of coming up with the idea and coming up with the treatment for the whole thing, and then when you have to do it, when you have to model everything and render everything, like sure I enjoy aspects of it and I enjoy like specifically like for example compositing I enjoy a lot. Uh, where you have, where you're actually playing with the final image, um, but it was always I realized kind of at one point that I the, the aspect that I enjoy by far the most is the very early on kind of creative aspect of the project, and I, and then that was the only kind of um, that was the kind of the the cons the conscious de decision that I made uh, a while ago uh, when I started working on my personal projects. The goal for me was not to kind of um, create the best looking 3D. Like I, I still suck at a lot of things. Uh, it was always the the goal for me was always to come up with a with a creative treatment that 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 could resonate with people in in whatever way possible. Um, and uh, and it was literally like all of those projects were kind of like me kind of getting myself familiar with um, kind of writing ideas, treatments, or pitches or stuff like that, uh, and kind of creating these kind of small worlds. Uh, so even today, like uh, when you when you say freight, for example, um, that was like by far like the the, the first night of the three of us, Milan is and myself. Uh, we just kind of sat together. We we came up with the idea, and that was that was like insane fun. Uh, then the like the first week of the project was me sitting down and translating the idea into the previs, and that's like to me the most exciting because that's that's your actual directing job. That's your actual kind of creative part. You're working with very rough kind of previs at, the, at, the, at that time. You're working with very kind of rough gray figures and stuff like that, nothing is done. But that's the part of the project where you're actually setting the most important things. Once all the shots are, have been set and locked, everything after that is like, to me, is kind of like boring, repetitive production. 
where you have to model everything, you have to texture everything, you have to render everything, and you have to composite everything. And you have to repeat that for every single shot. Like it, it gets fun for the first couple of times, but then you have to repeat that for 50 other shots. And then you realize like, oh shit, it's, it's getting a bit repetitive. So even though I, I, I really enjoy some of those aspects of the work, to me, it's, it's always gonna be like the first, um, the first initial kind of stage. I guess you can very easily equate it to, um, to when you're painting um, like the very kind of first kind of brush strokes where you're just kind of sketching out the composition and laying down the groundwork, uh, like the broad strokes of the painting. That's that I, I would kind of imagine like a lot of artists uh, have a lot of fun with that because like that's when you when you've laid down your groundwork and when you have your composition like locked, it's all very rough, but that's the composition. That's the final composition. Everything that happens afterwards is just kind of going in and painting all the little details, and um, I guess that's like to me at least that doesn't sound as fun as like the initial uh, first stage, which is just kind of setting up this big idea of what this thing is. Um, that's so, my answer. So you so <laughs> good that you didn't say it. it was a long answer. I'm sorry for talking too much, <laughs> but no, no. But uh, yeah, uh, the, so repetitive stuff is what becomes a little boring right yeah for me it's the same absolutely i agree on that yeah. yeah even in art i like to toss out the new ideas but when it comes to polishing stuff it does get a little bit tedious and yeah. heavy uh they're asking us we have a question actually they're asking us when will we go to niche niche is a city <laughs> in the south milan is asking and he asked me this already i think two other people asked me so Maybe we should organize something, guys, and I'm not joking now that we can come and uh, bring a couple of concept artists and uh, artists in general and talk down there because this is the fourth message that I'm getting from people to come down there. I hope Sava will join me. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of family there and I used to go very often, but now I, I just haven't been in a while. But yeah, I'll take any excuse as I as I get like uh, Milan and I sp spoke about this like last year's CGA conference and I still haven't haven't visited down so I guess sorry Milan but <laughs> yeah uh, See, someday yeah someday they're offering us a kilos of meat so it's good we will go I'm going I don't know about you but I'm going <laughs> nice but, but speaking about uh, CGA so guys yep. if you are not familiar what CGA is CGA is an uh, event in Serbia that's happening in November and uh, it's 3D, 3D mostly, but it's developing now and you should check it out. I will post the link uh, in my, on the YouTube comments because CGA is growing. It's a great event and yeah. I think it has a really big potential to become something really, 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 really good. And I'm yeah, I, I, yeah, I will, I will say, it, I mean, we've been to a couple of events uh, these past couple of years and especially like last year has been quite intense for me with the events but but CGA really kind of like this is not this is no like bullshit false advertising or or anything because it came out of nowhere but it was so well organized and well funded and it was a completely free event which was just mind blowing to me after seeing all the yeah. other kind of big expensive european events uh, which are expensive for a reason but um, still like i can i can imagine like a lot of people starting out that want to kind of um at least start to educate themselves of what what's possible in this kind of industry uh can't really like um justify buying an expensive ticket for any other event so that's where like stuff like this is is insane to have like like organizers actually bringing like proper a-listers uh speakers and uh, having like the event for free so that's um, there was a free food also and drinks which was insane and a party at the end which was also yeah, free. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was really nice i mean so it was proper yeah it was proper so this is this is a big shout out for them because we have been talking recently i've been talking with them for one year and i know you are also talking and i hope that it's gonna develop and become something big, big because we need to bring people to Belgrade and make it a hub of this kind of stuff for the Balkan and stuff like that. But we'll see how that goes. So, yeah. so that was a shout out. I'm a, I apologize now. I apologize if I'm talking too much and not asking Sava questions, but we were prolonged <laughs> because of that five to ten more minutes. So you, you worked on some amazing cinematics here and they are looking dope, man. I am watching now that uh, this is the Gears of War, if I'm right on the, on the screen. 
you speak Let me just, sorry, sorry to cut you off there. I just saw a couple of questions that I want to get before we move on. Don't worry, we, we will come back. On. We will come okay, back. Okay, we'll okay. Come cool. back. Don't worry. We have, guys, I'm prolonging the interview because I was boring and talking five minutes. So I will prolong <laughs> it for 10. And I feel I'm ashamed of myself because of it. So, so. <laughs> Chill, man. It's all good. So you go a lot, a lot on the events and uh, give lectures there. Uh, will there be any events this year that we will we will listen to you or or still unknown? Per perhaps. So uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't like last year was insane. Uh, last well, year you were on every event in the world, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, last year was insane. Like uh, uh, 2017 was a couple, but uh, last year was eight events total, and I gave talks at six of them. Uh, so this year I wanted to because because of that I wanted to kind of give myself some time off and not pretty much do any events this year. Sorry, there's a loud car. Um, so so I, I wanted to take a little bit of a break and I wanted to essentially work on more stuff that I can talk about in the future. Um, so so yeah, I wanted to skip all of them, but there there may be one event this year that I might be visiting. So I'm still kind of confirming that. Nice, nice. So there will be one event that people can still see you. And yep. I, I've been to three lectures of yours or four, I'm not sure. I enjoyed every lecture of it because it was very unique. Well, thanks, man. Thanks. I really enjoy your lectures because they're always the worst and very well spoken. And I really <laughs> love to, to hear you speaking about the they're stuff. Always, you... They're always the worst? Did you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, did I say I said they're always the best? <laughs> I said they're the best. They're really good. <laughs> they, they are always the worst, man. Like I, I can I can say that. Like I'm no, just that's sweating. Not true. I'm just sweating uncontrollably. It took me a while to figure out that I shouldn't wear like gray shirts uh, because like that <laughs> that should, people can see that. So, <laughs> so I was like all white after that, all black or black. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm advising you, and I'm not joking. Uh, if you see that Sava is speaking on any event, it's a lecture to be. Trust me when I tell you, there is so much info on that lectures and so many things that you can see there. It's insane. Uh, just quickly, so the two questions that we had, I'm not sure, but there was one question that had, that said, how many people worked on this short? Okay, okay. The other one was, how much time did your team need to make? F All right, so this is for freight. But the first one, I'm not sure what it's related to. If it's related to freight, uh, they're both was... related to freight and they're asking. Okay. You. Okay. Okay. So the first one, how many people worked on this, uh, on freight, we had, um, a core team of five people. So it was, uh, Milan who designed the character and pretty much everything else we had is who scored the music. We had Mihailo who modeled some of the assets. We had Antonio who is in the chat with us, sexy Antonio. Uh, he made the character, Hi, and then and then I did pretty much everything else three D related, um, and then we had Take One, which is a local motion capture company who did the motion capture services for us and did all the character animations and stuff like that. And that was a couple of people, uh, actually just one anima animator, uh, and then. We had Ekoik, which is the sound design company, and they did all the sound design and uh, mastering and stuff like that. So in total, it was roughly eight, nine people, something like that. But the core team was was really small. Uh, and it took us uh, roughly five months. Uh, it wasn't all full time, so it was probably a bit less than that. If we worked full time every single day, well, every single day, every working day, it would probably take us like three and a half months, um, but it was it was five months in total. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a long time to do it. Yeah, I mean it's a very short for the amount you did, but being five months on a project, it is a little bit hard, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. Um, it, it is, but at the same time, it isn't because again, when I when I started out, like doing this stuff by yourself or by a very small team of people was nearly impossible. Like just to render times would be something that would completely kill the project. Like you couldn't even like think about doing something like this. Whereas now these days you can very easily produce um, something that's kind of similar to the AAA quality. Let's talk uh, about that. Let's talk about that was my next question. What yeah. kind of renders, uh, renders, renders, what kind of renders do you use <laughs> and uh, how do you play with them? How do you optimize them so they're quick enough to finish the project? Uh, so I I used to use V-Ray in my early like ArcVis days and, and motion design days. 
Uh, then I switched to Octane um, for that Twitch and IFCC and uh, a couple a couple of other projects that I did. Uh, so Octane was a game changer for me because it was uh, specifically tailored for GPU rendering. Uh, and I bought a machine that has uh, four 980 Ti's. That's still mm. the machine that I use today. Uh, so even like even there's been like new graphics cards that are awesome. Like these four old ones still work like charm for me. Uh, and it's stable as hell. I mean, knock on the wood, it's stable. Uh, <laughs> but it's um, that's that's the kind of the like that was the big shift for me where because like previously where renders were so long and it, they took so much time to kind of optimize uh to make animations now with with like the the resurgence of like cg um, or gpu rendering like that that issue just went away because now you don't have to worry about almost don't have to worry about the rendering side of things uh and that's just like a complete relief because you, you get to focus on what's important you get to focus on making the film and telling the story and um, like the important stuff. Um, after Octane, I switched to Redshift. I, I've been using Redshift since, well, Freight was the first project I did with, I did with Redshift. And it was simply because um, it, it was at the time, it was way more stable and way more production friendly. Uh, I think Octane has like made leaps and bounds since I switched to Redshift. I think it's as awesome nowadays. Um, but at the time when I was doing Freight, uh, there was just a couple of features that weren't supported in Octane that I absolutely needed. Uh, and uh, that's why I kind of made the, um, the, the change. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. I mean, as far as optimi optimization goes, um, like for example, in Freight, uh, there weren't any displacement maps used, but there's still kind of the illusion of detail. Um, is I just used normal maps for all of the materials and everything was everything was done in substance painter everything was baked uh, and that's why everything has kind of this very kind of consistent quality because every every single asset had the same attention devoted to it uh but yeah apart from that like that's that's the only thing like i, I don't really i'm not really a technical person so like with redshift i pretty much have the settings on default and i just up the samples and that's that's kind of it um like with freight I guess people are kind of amazed that uh, like the average render time was around two minutes per frame for freight. Mm. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's in my experience, that's incredibly fast. Like two minutes per frame is just insane. There's that's been insanely shots. fast, man. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not, again, like disclaimer, like it's not the perfect render. It's not, but by any means, it's not perfect. But again, it's not important to me. Like having perfect renders is, uh, the least of my worries because I, I, I don't want to sell myself as being a CG artist or a render a render or a lighter or a compositor or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so to me, the most thing is like the thing is the most important is to tell the story and to like to, to make the short. If it's not the most insane technical quality, like I don't I don't really care if I was able to kind of hit the emotions and stuff like that. Mm, I see, I see. <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's again like to, to to kind of make the comparison to design like if you whatever tools are you using like if you're able to convey the design uh, but it's not the most realistically painted image or whatever but it's still very clearly conveys what the design is like that's job done um, mm. so yeah I see I see yeah that's a very good comparison I really like it because yeah so designers can understand like me <laughs> uh, yeah, what I want to know is, we have a question, and since we are showing Freight, I think it's a, Freight, it's a good time to ask it. They're asking, uh, do we ever get uh, to know what is the story all about? Did he kill himself? What was he, uh, what was, what he was expecting to happen? And will there be any sequel of it? Um, so plans for the sequel. I would say not at this point. Uh, Freight was a very self-contained story that was really kind of, um, that emerged from a certain period of our lives where we were all kind of feeling slightly depressed and slightly down. And it was kind of a difficult, uh, well, it was kind of exploring a bit of our kind of more darker side of our psyche. Mm. Um, we, we were not planning on airing sequels as of now, but like, who knows, uh, that might change. Uh, as for the actual story, I would very much prefer uh, to keep that to myself. Uh, and I know that's, that might be an annoying answer, but 
uh, one of the things that we wanted to do with freight and like that's the that's essentially the thing that I always strive to do whenever I do my personal work or whenever I do you know, client work. Uh, I always try like the, the thing about filmmaking, filmmaking that appeals to me the most is the very basics of it, which is telling stories visually and not having anything kind of explain it apart from the pure subtext and the metaphors of, of the pure visual storytelling. Um, and uh, I, I think that that kind of gives a lot of mystery and a lot of um, uh, like opportunity to, for people to invest themselves in the story and kind of yeah. put themselves in the film. Um, and in the past with our personal projects, we were very kind of open to sharing, like with IFCC, we pretty much shared everything. Uh, but with Freight, I really wanted to kind of um, go a bit different and kind of not really hide, but like the film, there, there's this uh, great saying that uh, when you finish the film and when you put it out, it's no longer yours. It's the audience's. So they get to experience it. They get to immerse themselves in it and they get to kind of um, have their own kind of ideas of what it could mean. And I absolutely love that. Like if, if there's like like there's I would I would urge everyone because we launched the film on on our on my Vimeo channel, but we recently relaunched it on YouTube uh, on Dust. Dust is like a short um, short short film sci-fi platform on YouTube. They share like only short sci-fi films, and it has way more views there. It has way more engagement there, and it's kind of 50-50. Like there's half people who hate it, and then half of the people who love it. And I, I and I found that to really be like. Yeah, but but I found that to be brilliant because there were there were all these other kind of takes on the film that we never really thought about. Like there were people who, like coming up with theories and stories that we never never really like that wasn't our intention. But that's completely fine because that was that was the intention to have people kind of um, kind of like formulate their own ideas about it. And by the way, like there's loads of airport jokes as well, which is hilarious. So if you if you get the chance and if you don't have anything other to do, like it's it's fun scrolling through the com comments, if nothing else. Uh, but yeah, that's again very long answer of saying I would I would rather not say what we thought the story was because I think that will spoil it. That will spoil the whole whole experience. Mm, I see, I see. I want to ask you a question because. Two of people are asking and there is one question it says hi Savo I'm a fan of your work and I was wondering if you would take me for your short can design hard surface codename Dharmar and there is also <laughs> <laughs> I, was literally gonna, I was literally gonna ask like where are you reading this from like I, I can't see anything <laughs> it's, it's a little bit tough but there is also Bjorn Hari I mean the question is how do you collaborate with uh, people and can you take me and Bjorn on the next short and how do you look for artists or you collaborate with friends? How does that go? Because I know many people would like to join you. I'm one of them. And I will, like to... I will, I will gladly take you and Bjorn aboard. Oh my God! <laughs> this Bjorn, did you hear this? I think my heart just jumped a little bit now. <laughs> but the thing is, Bjorn has to design hard surface, and then you have to design some monsters. You have you, to switch roles. You want to have a horrible <laughs> short film? <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure something out. <laughs> Uh, no, so I, I guess I mean with the, with the collaboration, it's it all started again in that co-working space that we shared yeah. uh, because it was like the three. Well, it was more of us in the in that space, but um, like sitting next to Milan every day and seeing like his design, you're like you you can help yourself but not want to design something from it or, or build, build something that he designed. So that's that's how we started. We were just kind of like sitting next to each other and hyping each other for over a year. Like, holy shit, your that render looks awesome, or holy shit, that your design looks freaking amazing. So we've been like in that hype for a while, and then all of a sudden we were like, all right, fuck it, let's just do something together. Um, so that's like the very basic of it, how it started. But um, in order to get to that part, in order to, if you're just starting out, and if you're a freelancer, if you're, if you're a solo artist that like does a few things and can kind of make uh, and want to make like something like like I have. Um, you, you you just kind of need to realize it takes a while to get to that point. It takes a while to to get to the point where other people will want to join you and where other people want to kind of work with you. Um, and like getting to that point, like it takes a lot of pers well persuasion. And when I say persuasion, it's not like literally begging for somebody. It's uh, I've done like in my personal experience, I've done a lot of animations and personal animations and personal work before that so after all of those like Milan was eager to join up because he was I mean not to speak for him he can like tell me otherwise if he's here but um, 
because he saw that I was passionate about it and he saw that I can do the work, he wanted to join up. Uh, if the two people that are just kind of starting out and they have never done anything like this before, they want to join, join up, they, they will, but they will most likely fail because there's not that kind of trust and there's not the experience behind it. Um, and then like even with our personal work, it kind of every time we did something, it kind of grew. Uh, first, it was just Milan, Iz and myself. For the next project, it was uh, Nana, then Mihailo as well. Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of like it grew. Like you, you do a couple of those personal projects together. You're kind of starting to get the reputations for yourself, and you get you're starting to kind of, it's 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 like screenwriting 101. Like people are not who they say they are. They are what they do. They're like if you're just talking about your short films or your personal projects, and you're just talking about wanting to do them, but you've never done anything, and when you reach out to people, like they're they're probably just gonna ignore you. But if you spent like five years working on personal projects and you have like five or six of them, it's much more easier to convince people because they'll see like your track record. Like you, when you come to them with the idea of, hey, like I, I did a couple of these, I, I, I have an idea for the new one, would you like to collaborate? If he saw what you did before, like he'll, he'll be way more kind of easily persuaded to, to come on board. Um, so yeah. I like that you said that because this is a very important subject. Uh, I know that many people, when they are doing anything, they are like, uh, they are like, oh, nobody is looking at me, nobody wants me, uh, this industry is hard, uh, nobody is helping, and I always say to, say to that people, guys, the quality always comes on top, so you have to produce the quality, to, so people see your quality, and then it becomes a little bit easier, and for me, yeah. that's very important, like for people's mindset to understand that. How much you give is how much you get, literally. And what I wanted to ask you is, and I would like to finish with that, you're, you don't do concept art, but you know yep. what is a high quality. You know what is a high quality. And I want to ask you, what is a good design or art for Z Sava Zivkovic? Uh Well, I mean, the more I do kind of like short films and stuff like that, it's always, it always comes down to, to the story for me. So if it serves the story, if it serves the purpose of the story, it doesn't have to be like all of that functional. Like if the story requires for it to be functional, like by all means. Uh, but if the story is kind of a bit more abstract or if um, like the whole direction behind it is a bit more uh, on the edge, like it's literally, it, it needs to serve the story. And um, like if you, if you go to Freight again, um, a lot of a lot of the stuff with the design and the way he's kind of carrying himself is got to do with weight, um, uh, and the, like that 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 was kind of the most important aspect for me, um, and that's that's usually like the only thing I would ever uh, kind of focus on. Uh, I'm not that kind of a director that would go in review designs and kind of go crazy with detail like make this smaller or make this larger or make this more like w whatever it is like I, I would not focus on on small minute detail because i trust the designer and i trust that he knows what he's doing the only thing that i was focused on and the only kind of perspective from which i would give feedback feedback would be does it does it match the story's um kind of expectations and um that's that's kind of it Nice. One more question and we are wrapping it up, guys. Uh, the question is, what is your advice to any young artist, designer, director out there? Uh, take your time. I, I think I say this every, every single time, like with, uh, especially nowadays, like with the rise of social media and, well, not the rise, like social media is now like the status quo. Uh, but uh, like with, with social media and with everything, like the work that you can see out there, it's it's in it's incredibly easy to get kind of discouraged, and it's incredibly easy to kind of you go. I mean, I go on art station, I and I get bummed out every time I see all the amazing work that people are doing, uh, and people have b because there's kind of this. Um, like what's great about today is everything everything is accessible like every single thing is accessible like you can get free software like blender or you can get free tutorials that are you can literally learn anything you want 
almost for free nowadays if you're just very persistent about it. And that's that's like the, 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 the great thing about today is that everything is available. But because everything is available, people also think that uh, becoming a good designer or becoming a good storyteller or anything like that is also going to be available uh, instantly and readily. Uh, and that's that's not the case. Like to be to become a great designer, uh, you need to spend the time you need to spend to, to put the years in like people. I mean, I don't know. Instagram is this this big old mess, but I get so many questions on Instagram of uh, people expecting to do the same thing in a couple of months. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I when I when I say that I've been doing this for eleven years, um, they're kind of like shocked in a way. Uh, and and that's that's just the case because everything is so so readily available. People are, people are thinking that uh, to become good at anything is also going to be as fast. And that's, that's not the tr- not, not the case. Uh, so you just simply need to put in the time. You need to be patient. Uh, you can do pretty much anything. Like there's no, like the whole talent question. Like if you're persistent enough and if you're, if you're a hard worker, if you're disciplined, you can learn pretty much anything. Um, but it just, it just needs a lot of time. So that's, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with this because people are always trying to do anything fast. So, mm-hmm. yeah, this was episode 18, guys. This was amazing. <laughs> do you wanna? Subject. Do you wanna get? Do you wanna get? Sorry to break. You, do you wanna get the, la- the? There were a couple of messages or questions that I I wanted to answer, but there, we didn't. We answered all questions. Uh, there was like, if normal maps were baked, did you have? Do you to really bake wanna, them? after everything, answer on that? <laughs> I, I, I do, I do, Let's because do I, yeah, I, I, I have a lot of like technical questions and well, oh as well. Oh my God, Sawa has taken the host, everything. Sawa is leading. <laughs> I will sit down and relax. <laughs> Sorry, man. I just, I just wanna, I just wanna answer it all. But uh, yeah, quick answer. Uh, uh, we had to create low poly meshes, but it was done very quickly with ZBrush, so it was just like Z remeshed or decimated. Um, that's it, actually. That's the only one. Yeah. I, I don't know if you can see me. I have lowered myself in the chair. Nobody can hear me. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> and the host was is back. So amazing, Sava Zivković, guys. Episode 18 on It's a Dharma. So much cool info. Thank you for coming, Savo. Uh, Thank you for having me, man. Uh, it was I, uh, it was an honor. We we spoke about this for a while, and uh, I'm I'm glad we finally did this. Yeah, so, for a couple uh, of months, yeah. but we were all too busy to do it. So finally. Yeah. And I hope that we will drink some drink very soon. We want to our drink and draw in Belgrade. Guys, hit the subscribe button and yeah, hit the subscribe button. So thank you very much for coming, Savo. No worries, man. You're, you're becoming a true YouTuber, man. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way it is. I can't you need to you need, you need to change that into smash that subscribe button. Dharma that button, guys. That's that's what that's what they're saying usually. Smash that subscribe no, no, button. No, Dharma that button. Okay. No, oh yeah, no. yeah. There you go. Keep, Dharma it, keep goes it on, with everything. Keep it keep it on brand. I Dharma you. It can mean I hate you. I love you. Anyways, guys, <laughs> we will continue this conversation in private. So, so yeah. It was pleasure. <laughs> it was pleasure having you guys. Have a beautiful evening or a day. I don't know what's time at your place. And see you in the episode nineteen. Bye. Cool. Cheers, man. Bye bye.